but wait a moment. This life also is pleasant, and it has a sweetness of its own not at all negligible. We must not abandon it lightly, for it would be shameful to lapse back into it again. See now, it is important to gain some post of honor. And what more should I desire? I have crowds of influential friends, if nothing else, and if I push my claims, a governorship may be offered me, and a wife with some money, so that she would not be an added expense. This would be the height of my desire. Many men, who are great and worthy of imitation, have combined the pursuit of wisdom with a marriage life. While I talked about these things, and the winds of opinions veered about and tossed my heart hither and thither, time was slipping away. I delayed my conversion to the Lord. I postponed from day to day the life in thee, but I could not postpone the daily death in myself. I was enamoured of a happy life, but I still feared to seek it in its own abode, and so I fled from it while I sought it. I thought I should be miserable if I were deprived of the embraces of a woman, and I never gave a thought to the medicine that thy mercy has provided for the healing of that infirmity, for I had never tried it. As for continence, I imagined that it depended on one's own strength, though I found no such strength in myself, for in my folly I knew not what is written. None can be continent unless thou didst grant it. Certainly, thou wouldst have given it if I had beseeched thy ears with heartfelt groaning, and if I had cast my care upon thee with firm faith. Chapter 12 Actually, it was Olypius who prevented me from marrying, urging that if I did so, it would not be possible for us to live together and to have as much undistracted leisure in the love of wisdom as we had long desired. For he himself was so chaste that it was wonderful, all the more because in his early youth he had entered upon the path of promiscuity, but had not continued in it. Instead, feeling sorrow and disgust at it, he had lived from that time down to the present most continently, I quoted against him the examples of men who had been married and still lovers of wisdom, who had pleased God and had been loyal and affectionate to their friends. I fell far short of them in greatness of soul, and enthralled with a disease of my carnality and its deadly sweetness, I dragged my chain along, fearing to be loosed of it. Thus I rejected the words of him who counseled me wisely, as if the hand that would have loosed the chain only hurt my wound. Moreover, the serpent spoke to Olypius himself by me, weaving and lying in his path by my tongue to catch him with pleasant snares in which his honourable and free feet may be entangled. For he wondered that I, for whom he had such a great esteem, should be stuck so fast in the glue-pot of pleasure as to maintain, whenever we discussed the subject, that I could not possibly live a celibate life. And when I urged in my defence against his accusing questions that the hasty and stolen delight which he had tasted and now hardly remembered, and therefore too easily disparaged, was not to be compared with a settled acquaintance with it, and that, if to this stable acquaintance were added the honourable name of marriage, he would not then be astonished at my inability to give it up. When I spoke thus, then he also began to wish to be married, not because he was overcome by the lust for such pleasures, but out of curiosity. For, he said, he longed to know what that could be without which my life, which he thought so happy, seemed to me to be no life at all, but a punishment. For he who wore no chain was amazed at my slavery, and his amazement awoke the desire for experience, and from that he would have gone on to the experiment itself, and then perhaps he would have fallen into the very slavery that amazed him in me, since he was ready to enter into a covenant with death. For he that loves danger 
shall fall into it. Now the question of conjugal honor in the ordering of a good married life and the bringing up of children interested us but slightly. What afflicted me most, and what had made me already a slave to it, was the habit of satisfying an insatiable lust. But Olypius was about to be enslaved by a mere curious wonder. This is the state we were in, until thou, O Most High, who never forsakest our lowliness, didst take pity on our misery, and didst come to our rescue in wonderful and secret ways. Chapter 13 Active efforts were made to get me a wife. I wooed. I was engaged. And my mother took the greatest pains in the matter. For her hope was that, when I was once married, I might be washed clean in health-giving baptism for which I was being daily prepared, as she joyfully saw, taking note that her desires and promises were being fulfilled in my faith. Yet, when at my request and her own impulse she called upon thee daily with strong, heartfelt cries, that thou wouldst by a vision disclose unto her a leading about my future marriage, thou wouldst not. She did indeed see certain vain and fantastic things, such a conjured up by the strong preoccupation of the human spirit, and these, she supposed, had some reference to me. And she told me about them, but not with the confidence she usually had when thou hadst shown her anything. For she always said that she could distinguish by a certain feeling impossible to describe between thy revelations and the dreams of her own soul. Yet the matter was pressed forward, and proposals were made for a girl who was as yet some two years too young to marry. And because she pleased me, I agreed to wait for her. Chapter 14 Many in my band of friends, consulting about and abhorring the turmulate vexations of human life, had often considered and were now almost determined to undertake a peaceful life, away from the turmoil of men. This we thought could be obtained by bringing together what we severally owned, and thus making of it a common household, so that in the sincerity of our friendship nothing should belong more to one than to the other, but all were to have one purse, and the whole was to belong to each and to all. We thought that this group might consist of ten persons, some of whom were very rich, especially Romanianus, my fellow townsman, an intimate friend from childhood days. He had been brought up to the court on grave business matters, and he was the most earnest of us all about the project, and his voice was of great weight in commending it, because his estate was far more ample than that of the others. We had resolved also that each year two of us should be managers and provide all that was needful, while the rest were left undisturbed. But when we began to reflect whether this would be permitted by our wives, which some of us had already and others hoped to have, the whole plan, so excellently framed, collapsed in our hands and was utterly wrecked and cast aside. From this we fell again into sighs and groans, and our steps followed the broad and beaten ways of the world, for many thoughts were in our hearts, but thy counsel standeth fast for ever. In thy counsel thou didst mock ours, and didst prepare thy own plan, for it was thy purpose to give us meat in due season, to open thy hand, and to fill our souls with blessing. Chapter 15 Meanwhile, my sins were being multiplied. My mistress was torn from my side as an impediment to my marriage and my heart which clung to her was torn and wounded till it bled. And she went back to Africa, vowing to thee never to know any other man, and leaving with me my natural son by her. But I, unhappy as I was, and weaker than a woman, could not bear the delay of the two years that should elapse before I could obtain the bride I sought. And so, since I was not a lover of wedlock so much as a slave of lust, I procured another mistress, 
not a wife, of course. Thus in bondage to a lasting habit, the disease of my soul might be nursed up and kept in its vigor, or even increased until it reached the realm of matrimony. Nor indeed was the wound healed that had been caused by cutting away my former mistress. Only it ceased to burn and throb, and began to fester, and was more dangerous because it was less painful. Chapter 16 Thine be the praise, unto thee be the glory, O fountain of mercies. I became more wretched, and thou didst become nearer. Thy right hand was ever ready to pluck me out of the mire and to cleanse me, but I did not know it. Nor did anything call me back from a still deeper plunge into carnal pleasure except the fear of death and of thy future judgment, which amid all the waverings of my opinions never faded from my breast. And I discussed with my friends Alypius and Nebridius the nature of good and evil, maintaining that, in my judgment, Epicurus would have carried off the palm if I had not believed what Epicurus would not believe and that after death there remains a life for the soul and places of recompense. And I demanded of them, Suppose we are immortal and live in the enjoyment of perpetual bodily pleasure and that without any fear of losing it, why then should we not be happy or why should we search for anything else? I did not know that this was in fact the root of my misery that I was so fallen and blinded that I could not discern the light of virtue and of beauty which must be embraced for its own sake, which the eye of flesh cannot see, and only the inner vision can see. Nor did I, alas, consider the reason why I found delight in discussing these very perplexities, shameful as they were with my friends. For I could not be happy without friends, even according to the notions of happiness I had then, and no matter how rich the store of my carnal pleasures might be. Yet, of a truth, I loved my friends for their own sakes, and felt that they in turn loved me for my own sake. O oh, crooked ways! Woe to the audacious soul which hoped that by forsaking thee it would become some better thing! It tossed and turned upon back and side and belly, but the bed is hard and thou alone givest it rest. And lo, thou art near, and thou deliverest us from our wretched wanderings, and established us in thy way, and thou comfortest us, and sayest, Run, and I will carry you, yea, I will lead you home, and then I will set you free. 